Hey there everybody, this is Caitlin here and welcome to our late night video for Card Game Tuesday looking at the newest spoiler article for Legacy Loss and Force of Will. And today I was sort of like a mixture of, well I'm not really sure what to say, slightly disappointed at the same time but then also like a little bit intrigued. I'll get into more about that in a minute, about why I felt this way but... Basically, these spoilers for this, for tonight are going to be Fire, Water. Now, this is quite peculiar, obviously, because the last spoiler we had was um, Darkness and Water. So, we're already re revisiting Water. But the reason we're revisiting it is because this guy here, our ruler, is Sol, the hero font of the Helio Star. Now, I first saw, like, a little preview or whatever of this guy's artwork because he's going to be featured on the Buy Three Boxes playmat or whatever for Legacy Lost. And when I first saw him and his little familiar demon guy, I was like, okay, he's definitely I like going to be one of the seven luminaries but I, when I was looking at him I kept thinking he was going to be fire darkness and I swear like looking at him and looking at his familiar I kept thinking to myself oh this is going to be fire darkness which is going to be kind of cool although I was thinking maybe if Lapis was going to be a ruler of this set I was thinking he was maybe going to be fire darkness because um that was his typing or whatever for his shift card in battle for Ataratica but it turns out this guy is uh, fire water and I think the main reason why he's fire water or at least the idea behind it is that he is the teacher or the, the greatest wizard of all of Altia or whatever he is the teacher of Mercurius and Mars which is why he is obviously fire water because he passed down his teachings to the two of them so one specializes in fire one specializes in water but looking at this guy he has a judgment of three now um, I believe in one of the spoiler articles I can't remember which one it was they mentioned that not all rulers in this set are going to have a judgment of three so I'm thinking either one of them is going to have like a bit more of a costly judgment or maybe one of them will have a bit of a cheaper judgment maybe it'll just be the two colors or whatever for that ruler but it gets me curious like who is it that they're going to obviously the the thinking behind it is if it's going to cost more to judgment that must mean that they must have a really powerful j ruler side so again this guy's got three uh, for judgment he has energized but in his energized produces either fire or water he has mana too just kind of similar to the seven luminates or whatever and you can remove a mana counter from the game and produce fire or water spend it only to play ancient magic cards if we flip over with him he is Soul, Dark Commander of Steam. Now, Steam isn't really that impressive of a magic, in all honesty. Like, like I, I, Ace and Fire are cool, and, you know, a Volcanion is a cool Pokemon or whatever, but to be the Dark Commander of Steam, it doesn't really inflict a lot of fear into me, to be all honest, especially if he's meant to be this epic-looking commander wizardy does, but uh, I digress. He is a measly 500-500. He enters with five uh, mana counters or whatever. And his ability here is, well, is enter clause or whatever, is as he enters your field, you may remove a card named Runic Commander Demon Akiot in your hand from the game. If you do, this card enters your field with five mana counters on it. And this card gains 600-600 as long as a card named Runic Commander Demon Akiot is in the removed area and is removed by this card. So essentially, um, either you are playing the game and that you're not going to flip him, like you're going to just keep him on his ruler side, or you, you do plan to flip him, but you obviously don't want to flip him unless you have that um, little demon dude in your hand because otherwise he is very very vulnerable I mean 500 500 I mean when I read that I was actually quite shocked I was like serious this guy is meant to be this like big bad teacher of Mercurius and Mars who were like pretty epic like kind of wizardy people and he's a measly 500 500 I was just like are you kidding me but and obviously he still has the ability to remove the mana counters to produce will for ancient magic cards but ma mainly I'm kind of disappointed in that you know, I, I did predict, whatever, I made like a little post not too long ago where I made a prediction about what five rulers we were going to get in the set. I predicted that they would all be dual types. I predicted Valentina, so I got that right. And I also predicted at least two new luminaries. So I'm kind of halfway right with that one because we've already got one. I feel like we are going to get a second one. Not sure who, but I feel like we are due for a second one because obviously there's seven of them. And there's going to be four sets uh, in the Lapis Cluster. So I feel like we're going to get at least two in each set. And maybe in the last set we might get three, potentially. I'm not too sure, unless Lapis himself is actually a luminary. But um, I'm not too sure about that. But moving on to the next card is that we have the Runic Commander Demon Accurate, who looks kind of cute. Who is a two-drop 600-600 with fire and water. And when he, he has an ability where he, when he enters your field, you put a mana counter on your J slash ruler. And when you play a chant, you can return him to your owner's hand. So basically, the idea with him is that... Um, you want to drop, if you're going to drop him in fields and you're not keeping him in hand to flip your J-Ruler, you're putting him down to put mana counters on your J-Ruler. And then when you're playing the Chant or whatever, which is like your ancient magic cards and stuff like that, you can return it to your hand. So you can just keep spamming the mana counters onto it to replenish it, which, you know, is kind of neat. 
And then next we have this like behemoth looking thing, which we saw a preview artwork of it. I believe it's one of the box toppers for this set. It's the twin headed dragon, who's a four cost, 1000, 1000, for one water, one fire, and two void. Of course, it's a dragon, so it's got flying. And you may spend will to pay this card's awakening cost as though this card were an ancient magic card, which is kind of interesting because his awakenings are only one fire and one water. So even if it's technically like a six cost with his awakenings, you can pay two of that with your mana counter. So you're only really technically spending two, uh, four will. But he is pretty cool in that his awakening for the fire one is when he enters the field, it deals 1000 damage to a resonator, not a J slash resonator, so it's not targeting J rulers. And the water awakening is that when he enters your field, uh, rest up to two target resonators and they don't recover during their controller's next recovery phase. Which, you know, is kind of scary and he's an epic looking dragon. I just love the artwork for it. Next we have this really, like, a lot of people are saying, like, a lot of people are split on this card. They're saying it's either really, really broken and, like, amazing and being so broken or it's a really, really bad card. Going over it, Conjure Time Bomb, which is an ancient magic champ. One fire, one void for two cost. Basically, let's go through it. You put a 100-100 firebomb resonator token with this clause in it. At the beginning of your turn, banish this card. If you do, it deals 1000 damage to your opponent and each J slash resonator your opponent controls. So, like, just like, just let that sink in, okay? If this, like, pulls off, if you manage to banish this uh, at the beginning of your turn, then you're pulling off like basically end game here you're getting it it also comes with an awakening the awakening is obviously three it's two fire and one void this token gain that token gains at the end of your turn you can banish this card if you do it deals 1000 damage to your opponent and each j slash resonator your opponent controls so basically if say you manage to i don't know like get the counters onto your ruler so that you had at least maybe five or something like that then you could basically use that to pay the like the awakening cost and even the cost for this card. But obviously, depending on like which order you do it in. So if you're paying the awakening, you know for a fact that you're dealing that damage at the end of your turn. Like that's just that's just it. There's no get out of jail clause with that one. Obviously, if you don't pay the awakening, you have to wait until your next turn, which your opponent could then like put up a counter to it because obviously there's ways to remove tokens because tokens are basically acting like resonators so there are ways there's obviously removal spells and stuff where they can like remove the bomb before you can detonate it essentially so really ideally if you are playing this card which is obviously meant to be played with soul or either one of the wizards because really like with jewel stones and whatnot it's very easy to splash colors now you are hoping to pull off the awakening so that you can get make sure that this card it can be banished by the end of the turn and you can deal that damage because it's insane and obviously people are saying oh well it's bad because obviously removal is a thing and it can easily be countered but i digress like i feel like like me personally i feel like it's so broken so so broken but obviously a lot of people disagree on it and apparently i have a software update notification so let me just get rid of that right here and then we can go back to looking at these cards. The next one here, we have uh, Ancient Magic Quick Cast Chant, which is only two costs, one fire, one water. The Rune of Souls, so this is where you can see um, him teaching uh, Mars and Curious here. Basically, he's like, uh, well, his, the flavor text is memorized runes allow for quick spell casting. So he's basically implanting the knowledge of how to cast these runes or whatever into his two students. And a lot of people were saying he looks a lot like Archer um, from Fate. Um, in this artwork, which I can see the same ones. Basically, with this with this card, you can search your deck for an ancient magic card, reveal it, and put it into your hand, and shuffle your deck. So now this deck um, combination, whatever, has a search ability, which is something which is totally crazy, considering that it's already got some aspects of burn, it's got some aspects of control, and now it's got aspects of search. So basically, it is, like, totally insane. Like, I know a lot of people are saying, oh, it's not so good, but obviously, the kind of current trend or whatever for Horse of Will is that the spoilers get revealed, everyone says the cards are bad, and then later on, when the more spoilers are revealed to support the, the J rulers that we've got, people then go and say, actually, it's not so bad, they're like, they're maybe they're, they're kind of good or whatever. So basically, we go through five weeks, well, I think it's three weeks, basically, because we're going through five different rulers, so at least, uh, or is it four? I can't remember now. I feel like it's five, but I might be wrong and it might be four. I feel like... Yeah, so like basically two to three weeks we're saying, oh, the cards are bad and blah, blah, blah. And then we'll get to, basically we'll get to like the last couple of weeks before the set drops and everyone's like, oh my God, I want this card or I want that card or I want that card. So basically everyone needs to chill out. 
And lastly, we have his magic stone, which is the magic stone of vaporization, which is a very pretty card, I'm not going to lie. It looks really awkward as a magic stone because it's like the smooth blue side and then like the super spiky fiery side. It looks really weird. But um, obviously it has the same like gimmick where if you don't control the ruler it's meant for, then you have to pay 300 life if you want to use it that turn. It produces fire or water, so it's basically a hearth core one. But it also has the added ability where you can pay one and tap this one and put a mana counter on your ruler. So if you're not having too much luck with your little demon guy and getting mana counters on, you can use this to like boost your mana counters, which is totally insane. But um, <laughs> I digress. I mean, at the same time, I was kind of hoping that if we were going to get another 7 Luminary Mage or whatever, I was kind of hoping that their gimmick would be different from Mars and Mercurius, because basically they are essentially all the same card, except that they had like different... Um, they had like different obviously will types and they had like different symbol skills. This guy doesn't even come with a symbol skill, which is a little bit of a shame because obviously Mars has got first strike, I believe, and I, I haven't actually picked up the Mercurius deck, so I can't actually remember whether she has a symbol skill. I'm pretty sure she does. I may be wrong. But it, basically people are just arguing whether he's actually better or worse than his two students. Personally, I probably won't use him because um you know, I mean like, I would have loved it if we'd, if he'd been Fire Darkness or something like that. Something a little bit different. I understand why, obviously, he's Fire and Water. But I just felt like we already have, like, a Fire Water ruler from a previous set, which was, obviously, Valkyrie Alice. So I, could, I was kind of hoping we'd get another ruler that was, like, obviously a dual type, but something different. Because, obviously, Faria is uh, Wind and Light, and Kaguya was also that. And Valentina was something refreshing and different in that she was Dark Water, which is actually a really good combination of cards. So I'm kind of hoping whoever our next ruler is who's going to get spoiled, is going to be more of an interesting um like color combination for well so i'm trying to think of like what potential ones that we could have next obviously because um so far we've had a uh, wind light we've had um uh, water dark and we've had water fire so i feel like the next one is either going to potentially be like something to do with dark because we've only seen dark once also, it could potentially be uh, wind. So maybe it's another luminary. I mean, I feel like they wouldn't do two luminaries in the same week. They might change up a little bit. But um, I feel like like I feel like another darkness ruler coming. So I feel like it's going to be another dark one. Maybe dark wind or something like that. That would be pretty interesting. But I digress. Those have been my opinions on these um, spoilers, guys. We'll see you on Friday for the next set of spoilers. Obviously with a little video game based uh, video before that. So until next time, guys, I will see you all later.